I want to say a little more about how you can select a set of styles from a style sheet and apply it to a web page. H1, P, U, L, L, I, they're all types of HTML element. When used as names for a group of styles, they're called element selectors. The set of styles that you define for a particular element type will automatically apply when you use that type of element on the page, unless, of course, you override it with an inline style. By the way, if you want different types of element to look the same, you could do this. What I'm saying is I want h1, h2, h3 and the paragraph tag to all look the same. Of course, I would need to remove this as well. But this is not what I want to do. Let's put it back the way it was. So if these are called element selectors, this is called a class selector. Dot standout is the name that I came up with. As you've seen, I can apply this using the class attribute of an HTML element. I used the span tags to indicate the beginning and the end of some text, and I applied my class to these. You can just as easily apply a class selector to a different type of HTML element. For example, I'm now saying that I want the heading to look like the standout text. Let's take a look. I've already used an element selector for the H1 element, so this is overriding it. Again, this is not what I want to do. Let's undo it. While on the subject of class selectors, notice what happens when I rename dot .standout to p.standout. Save and reload. And you can see that it's no longer being applied to the span tags which I put on the page. Indeed, this class selector will now only apply to any paragraph tag which uses it. So I'm overriding the information which I'd already specified for a paragraph. Let me just add another paragraph without specifying the standout class selector. So this paragraph is using my standard set of paragraph styles. This set of styles will apply to any paragraph unless I say otherwise. Any paragraph tags which include the standout class will look like this instead. But because the class selector is called p.standout, it can only be used in a paragraph tag. Again, this isn't what I want to do. Let's just put it back the way it was. I can use my standout class selector wherever I want to now. So you've seen element selectors, class selectors, and there's one more which I want to mention, and that is the ID selector. Let's suppose I want to put a copyright notice at the bottom of my page. Right underneath the list. If I tap the window key on my keyboard, and press a full stop, I can select the copyright symbol from here. To be honest, the only original content on this page is my picture. I'm pretty sure I can't copyright anything else. Let's see how it looks right now. Nothing special at all. It's not inside a pair of paragraph tags, so it's not picking up my paragraph styling. To apply a set of styles to this, I could wrap it up inside a pair of span tags, or I could use div tags. There's not a lot of difference between span and div. They're both used to indicate a block of text that you want to attach some information to, such as a set of styles but span tends to be used for small blocks of text on the same line, whereas div is better for larger sections of the page. 
Also, div will have the same effect as the paragraph tag. It'll throw a line break, which you may or may not want to do. Now, I could use a class selector here, like I've done before, but I want to do something a little bit different this time. I'm going to give these div tags an identifier, an ID. Let's be clear, the ID could be pretty much anything I want to make it, as long as it's unique. For example, I could have called it bottom of page, but the word footer makes sense for what I'm trying to do. Now, to say what this is going to look like, I'm going to add a set of styles. To speed things up, I'll just copy something that's already there. It doesn't matter where I put this, I'll put it underneath standout. By the way, that semicolon on the end there isn't, strictly speaking, necessary, but it's not doing any harm either. I only need it if I intend to add another style to this set of styles. Now, I'm going to change the name of this style set to hash footer. And so it will apply to any HTML element which has the ID footer. I seem to have spelt the word copyright incorrectly. Let's just fix that. You can only use an ID selector once on the page. Of course, because it applies to an element with a particular ID, and that element ID must be unique. ID selectors are good for specific areas of a page, like headers and footers. There's one more style selector which I'll mention for completeness. This is called the Universal Selector. The asterisk is a wildcard. It basically means anything. Let's just modify the HTML slightly. I'll remove the paragraph tags from this line of text. And watch what happens. You can see that the universal selector will apply to everything on the page. But since I've already specified styles for my headings and my paragraphs, pretty much everything that's already on the page, I won't see much of a change because my existing style selectors will override this one. I suppose it's worth noticing that the font size of my hyperlink has changed because my hyperlink style selectors didn't specify a size. OK, this is beginning to look a little bit messy. Let's put it back the way it was. The next thing I want to do in this video is show you how to put these styles into a separate file. I'll start by launching another instance of Notepad. and I'm going to cut and paste all of the styles out of the head section of my web page into this file instead. I don't need the style tags in this file. In fact, I don't need them in the head section of my web page anymore, so I'll get rid of them from there. Now I'm going to save this file with the extension .css, which stands for Cascading Style Sheet. I'm calling it mystyles.css, but I could actually call it anything. The name styles is probably more common for this type of file. I'm also saving it in the same place as my web page. And now I need to create a link from my web page to the style sheet. The link tag doesn't come as a pair. By the way, the href attribute could point to a style sheet on a completely different website if you know the full address. The fact that I've only included its name means that it needs to be in the same folder as the page itself. 
let's make sure it works. Everything looks absolutely fine. The fact that I've put my style definitions into a separate style sheet means that I can use them on any web page which has the style sheet link in the head section. This is incredibly powerful. You can change the whole look and feel of a web page by simply pointing it to a different style sheet. Indeed, you could change the whole look and feel of a website by simply replacing a style sheet with something else with the same name. Perhaps you could have a style sheet for a special occasion like Christmas, or you could have one style sheet for summer and one style sheet for winter. You can still use the head section of a web page to define styles in addition to an external style sheet. Styles in the head section will override those in an external style sheet if there's a conflict. And as you've seen, inline styles can override everything else. Why not try out some of these techniques for yourself? Experiment with ID selectors and class selectors for specific elements, like I showed you here. Also, try moving your styles into a separate style sheet and linking to it, and make sure that they still work.